And later on on data points, we'll go into detail about what the Finance Act changed in the tax framework in the country. Over the last one year, President William Ruto's administration has suffered major legal setbacks at the, at the courts with at least four consequential decisions hurting the regime's defining moments, from the quashing of 50 appointments of chief administrative secretaries to decisions on revenue mobilization measures and universal health coverage agenda. The president's team has been kept busy at the courts defending laws that had been subjected to intense criticism while in parliament only to end up in laws. The president's foot soldiers are now training their eyes on the judiciary, accusing it of judicial activism. Safin Acheng Omar explains. The Kenya Kwanzaa government has suffered major setbacks since President William Ruto took over the reins of power with a series of court orders blocking the implementation of key programs under his administration. The latest is the Court of Appeals declaration of the Finance Act 2023 as unconstitutional, null and void. A three-judge bench held that the process leading to its enactment was flawed as it failed to consider views of the public on various sections. According to political and governance expert Javas Bigambo, the opportunity to draw big lessons from the ruling must not be missed. It should be a learning point to the National Assembly, in this case, and also to the Senate and their various legal departments in the manner in which they conduct due process for legislation. The other significant office in the Republic that comes into sharp focus is the office of the Attorney General and the office of the Solicitor General. To what extent do they review bills that emanate from the Executive and transmit it to Parliament for purposes of uh, legislation? To what extent do they offer or render fine, efficient and effective advice to the Executive? When he was elected, President William Ruto hit the ground running with an ambitious, affordable housing plan whose aim was to build over 250,000 housing units every year. The fate of the program would, however, be thrown into disarray courtesy of the overwhelming opposition of the move to deduct 1.5% of the gross income of salaried workers in Kenya to fund the base capital of the project. On 28th November 2023, the High Court declared the affordable housing levy unconstitutional on grounds that the levy was discriminatory against salaried workers. The government immediately embarked on a path to enact a standalone affordable housing act which took effect in March 2024. The new law, however, is the subject of yet another court challenge. On Friday, 12th July 2024, a three-judge bench comprising Justices Alfred Mabea, Robert Limo, and Frida Mugambi declared three health laws unconstitutional. The three are part of the four new laws that are the foundation of President William Ruto's universal health coverage agenda. A declaration is hereby issued that the entire Social Health Insurance Fund Act 2023 the entire Digital Health Act 2023 and the entire Primary Health Act 2023 are all unconstitutional for the reasons set out in this judgment and therefore invalid, null and void. The judges argued that the laws were passed hurriedly without proper public participation. Uh, I've been in Parliament uh, for 12 years now. I can assure you there are very many illegal uh, laws which have been passed by the so-called when you just um, uh, make a majority. There are very many laws whereby the public participation is just a sham. On 25th of July, the courts put bricks on the rollout of Maisha number, a unique personal identification number assigned to the Maisha card, a third generation digital identity card. The court also suspended the planned implementation of the National Master Population Register. This is after a Garissa-based lobby group, Haki Nashiria, challenged the planned rollout, citing loose ends in protection of personal data. In the heat of the anti-government protests, President William Ruto appointed a task force to conduct forensic audit of the public debt. The High Court 
has since stopped the task force from executing its mandate after two petitioners moved to court, arguing that the assignment by the president usurped the role of the Auditor General. Why would the task force to examine national debt audit be gazetted to the exclusion of the control of budget, to the exclusion of the Auditor General, and even to the exclusion of the Attorney General himself or herself within that task force. And so it raises a question as to whether, one, the Office of the Attorney General renders efficient, effective, and proper advice to the Office of the President and the Executive, or whether the Presidency seeks such advice from the Office of the Attorney General as the principal legal advice of government. A year ago, on 3rd July 2023, the High Court quashed the appointment of 50 chief administrative secretaries who had been appointed in March 2023 and sworn in by President William Ruto. It was the biggest blow in his first year of office. The Kenya Kwanzaa administration subsequently passed a law in parliament entrenching CSS offices. The president has since dropped the plan to appoint CSS on account of austerity measures occasioned by the public pressure to reduce government expenditure. When every or various decisions of the executive are stopped by the courts by way of uh, judgment that falls on it on the decisions or, the, or policy direction as a sledgehammer, it brings embarrassment to the office of the president. It brings embarrassment to the president. It stops the wheel of policy formulation, formation and implementation from turning. The growing list of government's legislative and policy interventions which have beaten the dust has escalated the frustration of a section of leaders within government who are now turning their guns on the judiciary. Parliament is the law-making body in the country. If the judiciary desires to be the lawmakers, they have the option of resigning from the judicial seats and come and run for parliamentary seats and come make laws in this house. This era, honorable speaker, of judicial activism and judicial dictatorship must and needs to come to an end, honorable speaker. We may want to be a bit careful from trying to appear to intimidate the judges whenever they make decisions that do not seem to be in favor of the government of the day or the political class. We must let parliament do its work. We must let the executive do its work. We must let the judiciary do its work. What should be the best alloy should be the rule of law and good governance. Safin Achieng Oma, Citizen TV.